What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Whew, how does the quality look? Because I am actually filming on a new camera that I just bit. Just bit? Just bought. I'm not filming on my usual Canon 1DX Mark II, that super bulky camera. I'm actually filming on my very first action cam from Insta360 Ace Pro and it's not sponsored by the way. Today we, I decided to hop on to do this video to do a little review on the Vivor all-in-one portable diesel heater. Now Vivor sent it to me, so I'm obligated to do a review video. And if you guys didn't know already, I also produce this glory hole. Well, not really, it's just a window vent solution to duct the heat produced by the diesel heater into the car, not the exhaust, the heat. Now, I used it once on my last trip and it was very, very successful, except for the fact that I didn't have enough power. These things do require a power source, so make sure you get a pretty decent sized power source. But anyways, let's dive into the review. <coughs> I'll let you guys know what I think of it. Let's go ahead and start off with the power source. So what I'm using is my portable battery bank. It has a 268 watt hours, 600 watt. And this only lasted me about five to six hours on low setting. So. You definitely want to get a bigger battery. Um, I should have listened to Mod by Phil. Um, he actually suggested to get a 100 amp hour battery. You can get it. You can get a pretty decent um, battery or one of those Chinese made batteries on eBay for around like 200 bucks. And all you got to do is just get a, a bigger Anderson plug. This is the tiny one. This is what I use. Um, and pretty much hook it up and then you could probably use it all night long. But I was only able to use it for five to six hours and it shut off. And one thing, you don't want this to suddenly shut off because when that happened, it left like a very nasty charcoal smell because the diesel heater actually needs time to shut off. So when you shut it off, it's still on. So I think it's like cooling everything down. But once it shuts off abruptly, it creates this nasty charcoal smell and it blow smoke into the cabin so careful that if you guys do plan on running the portable diesel here i suggest getting a much bigger battery definitely bigger than mine 268 watt hours i don't know how that converts to amp hours but what i had right here lasted about five six hours on the low setting i also forgot to mention i'm also running a led driver a 250 watt led driver because i know the diesel heater actually takes a lot of wattage to start up so i don't know if the cigarette outlet plug had enough amps because it only goes up to 10 amps and it needs at least 15 amps to start so i didn't want it to mess up during my first trip so i just got a 250 watt led driver and i hooked it up to an anderson plug and this pretty much plugs into the diesel heater right here oh this wide angle camera is pretty sick anyways it just quickly plugs in like that boom and then it has a regular outlet that you can plug into the portable power station. Now, the model that they sent me is the Bluetooth model and it also came with the remote. And this is honestly one of the best features that this portable diesel offers because I'm able to turn it on and off at the luxury inside my, my car while I'm camping and I can turn up the heat and turn down the heat. So it's great to have this control. But one thing that I didn't like is the instructions for the diesel heater wasn't very clear. Now, I don't know if you guys figure it out, but I'm sure there's a lot of videos that go through all this function. They actually have a lot of different functions on it. Like you can have a timer on it and you can set the elevation. Um, I quickly scrolled through all that because that didn't really matter to me. To me, All I wanted to do is just turn it on and off whenever I need it. And that was good enough for me. But if you care about the, the timer and all the other extra functions that I think is kind of useless in my opinion for my case um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube I might be able to link one in the descriptions if you guys are interested um, I know for the diesel heaters you're supposed to prime it but on the instructions it told me I was never able to prime it so all I did was turn it on and it seemed to prime itself and it turned on after a couple minutes if you guys figured out how to prime it let me know in the comment section below because I tried it almost everything I could find on YouTube instruction manuals, I couldn't figure it out. Another thing that I recommend doing if you're traveling with fuel inside the tank is just go get a little um, plastic wrap and wrap it around the cap so it completely seals it because from what I read online that the seals were bad so I just took precaution I learned from their mistake and I did it and there was no leaks. Alrighty so let me go ahead and show you some of the modification that I actually did before I ran it. Um, let me show you. 
cool. So it comes off, the cupper comes off pretty easily. It just has these four um, clamps and then wrap. Or actually, I get it out. Oh. So what I did was I bought a fuel line kit that I'll leave in a link description below. So anywho, the modifications that I did was I bought a fuel line kit. I bought a pretty much harder plastic fuel line kit. It was recommended because the lines they provided was like rubbery and stretchy and I heard that wasn't good for the fuel line. So I went ahead and changed those out. It's just pretty much um, from the back of the fuel pump and then goes all the way to the bottom. There's another um, fitting right here that's supposed to go in. But that's all I did. I just changed this line right here. So far so good. I mean everything seemed to work. It's a little rough getting this holes into this rubber hose so it does it takes a little bit of work to get it in i think if you have heat it might make it easier maybe i don't know but i kind of just spent a little bit of time and just mashed it in there but what i also did is i double check i double checked all the screws because based on the reviews in the past people found that some of their stuff was loose but luckily for mine nothing was loose but i just double checked everything just for caution and then another thing i had to do to run this is I had to get two two by fours because I don't know why, but so the exhaust and the intake um, hose come out of here, right? Let me show you guys what the exhaust looks like. So pretty much the exhaust, this is the exhaust right here. And by the way, it stays outside. It doesn't go in the freaking window vent. The exhaust sits like right here. And without raising it up with two by fours, this pretty much sits on the ground. And I don't know if it's a design flaw, but I don't know why they would put the exhaust there. But anywho, just a little two by four and it worked out. I do need to spray this black just to make it a little bit nicer, but this will do for now. Alrighty, so let me go ahead and show you guys how it sets up with my window vent. If you guys are interested in a window vent, be sure to click a link in the description below. I have an Etsy store or I have a PayPal checkout and I have these available for the GX470 and the 5th Gen 4Runner. Now these actually fit the GX460. It's just a little bit longer, I gotta make it a tad bit longer and I gotta add an extra washer inside to space out the, the slot right here because apparently the freaking GX460 um, windows are slightly thicker than the 470 but the window shape is practically the same maybe just like a quarter of an inch um, wider but uh, I'm gonna get these tabs made out for the 460s and then I'll have it available for GX460s if you guys are interested but I'll have a link in the description below and if you guys are interested in before diesel heater i actually have affiliate link that you can get a little discount off and i do get a little kickback for it if you guys are interested be sure to check everything out in the description below but anywho let's go ahead and set up the window vent and then we can run the diesel heater and show you guys how it works so it's pretty simple if you slip one side in and this is made out of polycarbonate so it has a much better flex than like your typical acrylic go ahead and slip one side in and then the other side you can kind of bend it inwards and fit it through the window slot and then the last step is pretty much slot in the bottom tabs onto the window so once you do that you're pretty much ready to roll up the windows and by the way you want to manually roll up the windows you don't want to use the automatic because you're just going to keep going up and down up and down so just a little tip um anyways let's go ahead and fire up vivor's diesel heater now i finally got to the other side i turned the car around so now we're working on the passenger side anyways um I bought these twist clamps right here to make it a little bit easier, but the problem is I bought four inch thinking that it would go all the way down to three inch, but it does not. So I actually have, um, I think either the two inch or three inch on order from Amazon. And I'll leave a link in the description below. And these actually come super handy because you don't really need a screwdriver to put it on. But anywho, let me show you guys how this works. Alrighty, so now that I got the clamps on, the four inch does work. I mean, it's very, very loose fit, but it holds, holds it on. And I actually prefer this a little bit. I mean, I'm just trying to make myself feel better for buying the wrong one. But um, on the night that it shut off abruptly, I actually was able to just pull this out right away. So the freaking charcoal smell didn't travel inside the car. By the way, if you guys are planning to run a diesel heater for anything, whether for inside your car or in your tent, or any enclosed space, make sure to always have a carbon monoxide detector inside the car. Now, I always had this. This is pretty much what's saving my life while I'm camping inside the car. But anyways, 
All right, let's go ahead and do the first fire up. All righty, let's quickly fire it up. So I have the remote right here, and we're gonna go ahead and press on. Start heating. I'll talk to you a little bit. And it takes a, like a little bit of a startup time. I think like maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So like I said, it does take a little bit more power to start up, but once it's fired up, it, it will definitely go down. So it's going up to 113, 114. So you can hear it ticking. And I think that's the, the fuel pump working. And by the way, this is the, the noise that you hear at night, but I can sleep through it no problem. As long as it's keeping me warm throughout the, one of those cold nights at camp, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. But, oh, it actually went up. So it's going up to 121 watts. So now it just went up to 144 watts on the output. Now it's going back down. After finally starting up, it's going back down to about 30 watts. You guys want to see what it looks like? It has pretty, I mean, the display looks kind of cool, I guess. It's pretty nice have a digital screen but I just don't know what it means so I think to go through the settings you actually hold oh there you go you hold the up and down and then you can scroll through the settings inside so I believe this is elevation right here you can actually change the elevation on this I don't exactly know how to ch actually change it because Maybe you hold M and then change it. I don't know. Oh, you do hold M and then you can press the up arrow and it'll change for you. But anyways, let's see how much draw power it's drawing now. So now, now that's finally up, it's pulling only about 15 to 17 watts. And it says I have about 12 hours. It didn't feel like 12 hours last time. I think it was because it's really cold and it had the battery outside. And I know battery doesn't do well out in super cold area. So maybe that's why I only got half. But it says I have 13 hours on this setting. Oh yeah, the exhaust is hot. You see, as you can see, the exhaust is getting exhaust outside. And the heat is going inside the car. And I have the car I had the carbon monoxide inside the car so if it detects any smell it will let me know and right now so far so good and it's freaking toasty inside so for what it is it's pretty decent I mean I just wish it had better instructions so I'd be more enticed to use the other functions but it's a little bit confusing and honestly I have no use for those extra features but the only thing I like about this is the remote. And there is also a, you can actually download an app. And I think it's on the manual and you just scan the QR code and then you put the password in. I don't know if you guys saw me scroll through the, the settings, but that one, two, three, four was the passcode for my diesel heater. So um, you can also access it through your phone as well. So, which is pretty nice. So if you want to mess with it, go ahead and hold the up and bottom arrow. And then you can switch through the settings. And I think if you want to adjust it, you have to hold M and then you click the top button and then it will go up or down, I think. I don't know. I haven't really messed with it much, but this is as far as how I got it. And it works. Now, there you go. It's nice that it has a little um, audio to let you know when it's turning off. So like I said, it takes a little bit of time for it to fully, oh shit, that's hot. It takes a little bit of time for it to fully um, shut down because it needs to cool down the internals or whatever. If you shut off it like super abruptly, it will smell like charcoal. So I don't recommend doing that. And don't touch the freaking tube like I did because that thing was freaking hot. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I had for today. Thanks for watching this video if you guys got through the whole thing. If you guys are interested in the window vent, I do have a couple more GX470s in stock. Uh, I do have maybe one more set of the 5th Gen 4Runner, but I can always make more because I get them made here locally. So it's all made in the US, so that's great. Uh, I can get it pretty fast. But um, if you guys are interested in the diesel heater, I have a link in the description below. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.